this conference is about uh, low impact development. Um, the program that I'm going to talk about is, I think, is slightly different from or from a different perspective because uh, this program not really involves any uh, development because we're talking about the vacant land in, in the uh, urban environment. Um, uh, the vacant land has been a problem for many cities. Um, uh, like in Syracuse, we have many uh, vacant parcels. Uh, the, the county, uh, on the, on the county has been using this, these parcels to uh, uh, develop some uh, new, uh, green infrastructure projects uh, to control the storm water and, uh, and uh, help them to uh, meet with uh, their court, uh, court orders uh, to reduce the CSO um, reduction. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that uh, later. Um, the thing I really want to emphasize here is a partnership between different municipalities as well as between the public and some private organizations uh, and the general public. Uh, so, so all parties work, uh, work together, uh, created a program that can benefit uh, um, all the parties. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little background about our um, uh, organization. Uh, we are a small environmental organization in, in Syracuse. Uh, it was founded in 1982. Uh, Co-founder uh, Samuel C.J. is sitting in here, and uh, I'll, uh, uh, later I'll save some time. I believe he'll have something to say, to say too. Uh, we have a mission to provide uh, legal, technical, and uh, organizational services and to, to deal with uh, uh, various environmental issues. Um, we've been trying to incorporate uh, different uh, innovative strategies uh, to resolve these urban issues and eco economic issues and the social issues, sometimes uh, with success, sometimes not. Um, the program that uh, I'm I'm talking about is actually another um, project that's, that is still in working process. Um, Atlantic States has been taking a lead role in protection and the restoration of circuit waterways um, and uh, address the uh, uh, CSO issues in, in uh, that area. Uh, we did a uh, We brought up the lawsuit in uh, 1988 against Ondaga County for their violation of Clean Water Act for discharging um, wastewater in, into uh, into Ondaga Lake, which is the one you see at the uh, left of corner of of the uh, the the right picture. That's a very small lake, roughly about uh, four, four uh, square miles. Um, the lake has been polluted by uh, different industrial sources, and it's, um, it's, it's being cleaned up. Uh, aside from that, uh, it receives like 20 percent of its, its in, inflow is from the, mesh, the wastewater treatment plant, which is located uh, at the lower part. Right here, the small task. 20% uh, of the inflow is from that wastewater treatment plant, which is managed by Ondaga County. And uh, also, it, it, there are 40 CSOs, a combined sewer uh, overflows, uh, in, in two, two major uh, tributaries of Ondaga Lake. One is Harbor Brook, and another one is uh, the Ondaga Creek. Uh, they contribute about one billion gallons of, of uh, CS sold per, per year. 
So the lawsuit that uh, we brought up in uh, 1988 was settled in uh, 1989 with the constant decree, and that was amended several times. Uh, but it was in 2009 uh, when a fourth stipulation was entered, uh, which approved the county use green infrastructure as as part of the measurement to to uh, manage the combined sewer overflows. Uh, at that time, Syracuse become became the first community uh, in in the United States with that kind of legal requirement to use green infrastructure for uh, the the sewage overflow uh, management. Uh, that uh, stipulation requires the county to uh, capture 95 percent of, of the overall. CSO by by 2018, uh, in which 36.3 percent uh, will be done by by the green infrastructure, different forms of green infrastructure. And uh, since then, uh, the county started in play, uh, implement their civil uh, and green infrastructure program. And uh, they have uh, an, a pretty intensive uh, outreach, and also uh, have different uh, green infrastructure initiatives, including a project 50 in 2011. And uh, they built the green infrastructure projects on different types of, uh, of properties, but mainly public property, uh, which included the county-owned property as well as uh, city of Syracuse properties. Uh, Syracuse property includes the vacant lots, uh, which is utilized by the vacant lot program under Save the Rain. Uh, that's that's uh, the program that I'm, I'm going to talk about later. And uh, they also have a program to, to uh, build the, the green infrastructure projects on pro private properties through a green improvement fund. Uh, so the county will give uh, private uh, property owners uh, funding so they can build the green infrastructure project on their, on their property. So since then, they have uh, uh, finished uh, over 100 uh, different types of uh, GI projects, which include uh, some ex examples here. Um, this one is a, a green roof project on the County Convention Center, uh, which has a 65,000 square feet uh, green roof. Uh, that's a cistern uh, at a uh, War Memorial uh, Arena. Uh, that uh, 15,000 gallon cistern collect water from the roof and uh, use that water to make uh, ice for the for a skating rink for uh, Syracuse Crunch, which is a hockey team. And also, they have some uh, commercial and res residential. Uh, Green, green Street project and the different types of porous pi uh, pavement project and of course some uh, vacant lot project. So why we uh, why did we look at the vacant lots for uh, green infrastructure projects or for this program? Uh, vacant lots themselves have some some negative impacts to uh, the urban environment. Uh, first of all, they cost the city money. Uh, even though the city doesn't own all the vacant lot projects, but uh, in most of the cases, the uh, city don't doesn't get any tax revenue from the from these properties. Um, in addition to that. For these properties that are owned by the city, they have to spend money to manage them, even though just the 
even though just uh, uh, providing very very minimal maintenance. So in Syracuse, uh, each uh, each vacant lot will need uh, uh, five hundred dollars in average for each year. So if you have like four four thousand uh, vacant lots, you need to spend like like two million dollars each year to, to just manage this. Uh, the, the management is very minimal, uh, including uh, regular mowing, um, removal of some uh, illegal dumping, and uh, and uh, maybe some periodical uh, inspection. And uh, also, the vacant lot may uh, lower the adjacent property's value. I mean, this, this is a study that is done by, on, on the right of the screen, this is a study done by uh, Temple University, uh, which shows that the, the, the closer a property uh, to, uh, to a abandoned property, uh, the greater the, the, the decreased value could be. Um, so this this uh, this is from another uh, aspect that show the the negative impact of of the vacant lot. Uh, part of the reason of for this uh, negative negative effect was uh, uh, they often look badly. The vacant lot often look badly, and they they are insightful uh, eyesores, and sometimes they may cause high rate of crime or fire risk and and uh, if they happen to become the home of few generations of of rodents that may present a public uh, uh, become public uh, nuisance and uh, and cause some health issues so the the, the city or the government has had has to uh, address these issues, uh, but fortunately, these vacant vacant properties also present uh, a different opportunities for some for some new uh, new concept and uh, new strategies. Uh, of course, they can be redeveloped by uh, by putting new houses in there. So. The, the the city can get back some some uh, tax revenue, and they can be turned into a park, so become so they can become a public amenity, and uh, and uh, instead of being a a uh, net contributor, they can also be turned into a stormwater retention, so uh, reduce the the the, the stormwater runoff in the urban environment. Uh, I mean, their empty space, their um, suitable sites for uh, tree planting, urban forestry to increase the urban tree canopy. Uh, in Syracuse, Syracuse used to have a lot more trees, but uh, a few years ago, probably in in nine, 98 or seven, 98, there's a there's a big storm. Uh, during Labor Day, which uh, caused uh, killed like thousands of trees, and uh, recovered this recovering this uh, uh, canopy coverage is, is, is always a, a goal of uh, of Syracuse, uh, and also more and more interest in uh, urban uh, agriculture. Uh, many people in Syracuse. For example, in Syracuse, there are many immigrants, and uh, many of them are very interested and capable of doing agriculture in 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 the city. Uh, so that's a great opportunity to incorporate that kind of opportunity, uh, that kind of interest into the, uh, the the reuse strategy, and uh, and also for for a city, for urban environment. Uh, Habitat crea creation is is always a beneficial uh, thing uh, in terms of uh, 
by the Red City Conservation and uh, help to create uh, migrating corridors for for birds and for uh, 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 insects and other and others. So uh, Vic and Lock really give us a, a, a multiple uh, opportunities to choose from. And another major reason is there are uh, there are lots of lots of them. So this is in Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse is a, it's not a very small city. Uh, its current population is about 125,000 in in this uh, in this boundary. Um, they have probably 140 or something parcels in the city. Uh, so you can see uh, three thousand almost three. Uh, 3,700 vacant parcels in in uh, Syracuse, and uh, about a half of them are in the combined sewer area, which where uh, the county needs some green infrastructure project to help them reduce the the uh, combined sewer overflows, and uh, half of these. Uh, about half of these are public owned properties which can be uh, potentially used by uh, by this program and this is uh, some more uh, detail about uh, about ownership uh, you can see almost all the vacant parcels are under some kind of uh, um, city ownership they are either city owned or uh, owned by the city agencies or uh, held by the city in the tax deed form or they are uh, tax delinquent properties which can be seized by the city. So based on that analysis and the uh, the vacant lot team, which consists um, on the Doug County and uh, their their engineering consulting firm, and uh, Atlantic State Legal Foundation ourselves, and uh, and uh, the city of Syracuse, um, the community will be involved later. So we put together a a list of fundamental goals that. Uh, this Save the Rain Vacant Lot program would like to accomplish. Uh, first, is that's the county priority because they want to see a CSO reduction. So the program will, will give the county about 9 million gallons of CSO reduction by 2018. Uh, thanks. And uh, at the same time, they will provide different types of uh, uh, green infrastructure, uh, different types of green infrastructure for the community. Uh, so that may get uh, more public buy-in on green infrastructure. So people can see, you know, green infrastructure is not just about uh, the uh, force pavement and uh, and uh, bioswale, and it, it, they can be uh, in different forms. Um, at the same time, they will reclaim this abandoned loss to so uh, give this loss back to the community so they can serve the community. At the same time, we would like to use this program to engage the public in the project development all the way into uh, maintenance, management and maintenance of this project. So the county and uh, they, uh, first, of all, first of all, we need to get the, uh, the uh, access to the land. As we said before, most of the land owned by the city. So the county and city uh, entered a uh, inter-municipal um, partnership, which allowed the county to invest on uh, the city, the property to build their uh, green infrastructure projects. 
but the county will have the responsibility to maintain those projects. When we start working on one vacant lot project, we'll have to answer two basic questions. One, how we want to reuse that site or what we want to make that site to be. To be. Um, so we, we developed four different typologies which will be a re reuse typology. Uh, two of them are related to uh, urban agriculture and, uh, and uh, two of them are uh, general greening and uh, habitat creation. Uh, so totally four, urban orchard, vegetable garden, native plant garden, and the forest, urban forest or tree planting. And they may, the second question that you need to answer is how you're going to deal with the storm water. Uh, the four typologies on top may have some kind of storm water retention capacity, but they may not have that kind of capacity. In that case, you will have to use them in combination with other green infrastructure practices such as uh, green gardens and the cisterns and uh, tree trench. This is the basic process that, uh, for us to develop a project. Um, so the first step is to get a, a concept, uh, find location and get a concept. Um, we, uh, Atlantic State Legal Foundation will start that process, will work with the uh, on that kind of green infrastructure team to get the basic information about the hydrology of the site and uh, the, the site topography and other physical forms about that site to, to determine whether that site has a good um, stormwater reduction potential. And then we'll work with the community to develop a, a reuse uh, type that they would like to see. Uh, so for example, some, some people may want to have a, a orchard that they can pick some fruit from, and some may want to, uh, for some side, they may want to see a vegetable garden so people can come together and plant something, or just simply an a ornamental garden for, uh, uh, for a small gathering. So we work with the community closely, and uh, we have um, go out, uh, talk with the community members at some community meetings. We have uh, we have uh, participated uh, uh, in in over twenty community meetings, uh, and and also we have distributed uh, over a thousand flyers to inform the community that there is a program available and they can participate and they can. Uh, help us develop something that they want to see. And once we have a site and we have a concept associated with a site, we'll get the city planner to review, because this, this, these are their properties, we'll get the city planner to review the, the, per, the concept and the site. Once they okay that, the, those sites will go into city council for approval. And if it, and uh, if some of the sites are, are suitable pr properties, so the city has to uh, finish a, a acquisition process uh, to, to make the properties available. And, and then we'll work together we'll, with the community and with the design team uh, with help from city planners and their engineers to uh, develop the final design and then that will be put in the final construction phase. Uh, a contractor will, will do the construction. After the construction, the contractor will have one year responsibility for uh, uh, maintenance. After that, the maintenance will be taken over by a, a county contractor, which is a, uh, which is a community use group called the Undug uh, Earth Corps. Uh, they will do some basic maintenance. This is the current condition of this program. So 
So, so far we have finished the uh, uh, constructed four four uh, projects. This is our first one is uh, uh, urban orchard uh, in the uh, near west side of, of Syracuse. Uh, we we developed the concept with uh, a neighboring community center called La Liga, which that's a, a Spanish community center. Uh, they would like to have this facility for their youth education and after school program. Um, so we put in some uh, fruit trees and uh, and berry bushes. So this is a specific case. Um, as I said before, you may have to use separate strategies for reclamation and the stormwater management. So this one gets uh, stormwater management in the in the right way. You can see on the on the very right that's uh, uh, bioswale or um, uh, so the bioswale, yeah, uh, between the curb and the and the, the sidewalk. Uh, that piece is uh, a, is from 2012, I guess. That's our first harvest. Uh, this is another example. Um, this one has a rain garden and some few tree plantings at the back. Um, this one captured water from the street. Most of most of these uh, vacant lot properties have to capture water from the street because uh, they either don't don't have a additional property which had uh, which has a large impervious area, or um, or at a, at the same time they really don't have much impervious area because these 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 uh, vacant lots are all all. Um, Demolished and uh, and uh, grass seeded already, so the street capture would be the the most beneficial thing. This is the third project, which is not done yet. Um, this is another uh, ring garden plus tree 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 planting uh, scheme, uh, but this is the bigger uh, larger. Lot and it, it also in, incorporates some kind of uh, seating area so the community can use that. So some challenges. The first is uh, the, the per, uh, previous site use and the surface can subsurface condition um, because we in, in some of some of the strategy will grow things on. Uh, uh, grow things to eat on um, these vacant lots. So the previous site use is a a concern or a consideration for the design team. Uh, we so far we've been uh, trying to make clear that the site has not been used for any commercial use or industrial use. Uh, uh, if if there are some kind of, this kind of use, we may need to consider a either soil testing or um, or uh, direct soil amendment in order to in order to make sure that growth things are uh, are safe. Even though the recent study from EPA has shown that um, very there's very little chance that this heavy metal like lead could be uptaken by by the plants like a tomato or or apple or uh, other edible plants. There's they are more like immobilized uh, material, uh, but uh, direct contact with the soil which has lead in there is still a big concern. Uh, a recent study, I don't remember who did that, but uh, they did a study in Cleveland. Uh, they surveyed like about 56 uh, vacant, vacant land. Half of them were, were demolished before 1996 and uh, half, half of them after. They found that uh, 
before 1996, many of these beacon lines may have a, the foundation still in place, uh, which you can easily find. But after, uh, because there's new, new cold, so, so they're required to remove the foundation, but still you can see uh, debris in there. So this, the soil is kind of tough, but for like stormwater infiltration, that, that may be beneficial at, at, at some level. Um, but still, uh, if, if um, trees and others uh, are put in this kind of condition, that may uh, cause some, uh, some uh, carol take. Uh, the second, dif uh, the, the, the second challenge I should say that's a that's a design challenge, because most of uh, as we see for all this Im improved street which has curves, uh, all these um, uh, properties need to be graded towards the 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 street so they can create that part of runoff so the water will go. Uh, will go away from, from the property. And uh, when we want to grab the water from the street, or we'll collect runoff from the street, and uh, infiltrate in the beacon lots, we, we're kind of facing a, a challenge of reversing that flow or re reversing that, that grade. Um, sometimes it, it is doable, but sometimes it is a real challenge. and. Uh, you can see this is a, a one of the design uh, for a rain garden. Uh, we collect, collect the water or intercept the water at the cat basin, and from there it runs through a pipe directly into an infiltration bed. And so instead of bringing in surface flow, so the water will seep into through the soil and in, and, and and then go into the going to the infiltration bed. In this case, we just have to bring water directly into the infiltration bed. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, water is another issue. So sometimes you can use the, uh, the fire hydrant as a, as alternative uh, power water source for gardens and uh, trespassing and vandalism there's no real solution uh, sometimes you have you just have to fix it and long-term ownership and O&M this is the big big uh, issue for us we're still in the working process to get a real result real resolution for that thing uh, we looked into different uh, alternatives and um, the only, may, only alternatives that we may work is uh, to create a land trust, uh, take over the, the, the finish the project from the city and the manage the project and, and maintain the project. Uh, this is what's shown in this slide. Mm -hmm.